Hi, I've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Sunday, June 16th, and here in the Atlantic, uh, we have a system uh, moving towards Central America now. This is a tropical wave uh, that came westward through the Caribbean during the last couple of days and now it's running into an upper level trough which has been over the northwestern Caribbean over the last few days and when you get uh, this uh, southwesterly flow on the southeastern flanks of these upper troughs it provides upper divergence aloft which means air is spreading out and allows air to rise and cause thunderstorms and that's what we're seeing here these waves tend to blow up like this when they near these upper troughs and as a result they usually look a little bit more ominous than they actually are uh, this thing may look uh, from the view that we have here like a system that is close to a tropical depression but it actually is not if we zoom into it um, we can see that uh, the essence of rotation is here but it's mid-level you can kind of see it spinning uh, but that's an illusion based on mid-level clouds so at the surface it's actually not spinning uh, the wind is actually northeasterly at the surface which you can kind of see if you look at the yellowish clouds which are in the low levels here over Nicaragua that wind is northeast and we have southeasterlies uh, coming out of the southern Caribbean so what we have is a wave axis uh, where we have southeasterlies coming into it northeasterlies on the other side so we have a wind shift, but we do not have a surface low, and uh, this thing looks worse than it is. However, it is bringing lots of heavy rain uh, towards Honduras and Nicaragua, and it is moving west-northwest, and it's doing all the work for us. You can see where it's going to go. It's got thunderstorms out, of fr out in front of it here showing you the track that it's going to take west-northwestward into Belize, and it may make a brief appearance over the Gulf of Honduras here, just east of Belize and systems have in the past tended to surprise us in this area and it wouldn't surprise me uh, terribly if this did try to make a run at tropical depression status before making landfall in Belize however its time over water is going to be limited it has to pass over Honduras first and its time over the water in the Gulf of Honduras will be precious little and uh, I'm not expecting this to become any kind of a danger but it will be bringing a lot of heavy rain into Central America and from there it will continue a north west northwest track perhaps into the very southern Bay of Campeche here. And again, uh, like in the Gulf of Honduras, it may have a chance uh, to develop a little bit in here, especially since it will slow down a little bit in forward speed and perhaps get a little more time over the water. Uh, but again, it should not get strong if it does develop, and the chances favor it never developing at all. Um, but it wouldn't be surprising if we got a tropical depression here or here. But again, nothing strong, a heavy rain event just coming through Central America and into Mexico, and within a few days it will be gone. This is the GFS 24-hour forecast for the 850 millibar winds, which are in the mid-levels of the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet. You can see the colors here indicating some spin as the wave moves into the Gulf of Honduras just before moving into Belize. And you can see how quickly it does this here to here in 24 hours. And then by the time we get to day three, it's in the southern Bay of Campeche and barely over water. I mean, it could even pass inland over Mexico and never really gain water time. Um, but uh, this is not going to be... Uh, a big threat in here. It could try to make a run of development, but it won't become very strong. And the reason this isn't really a concern and why the track to the south is so set is because we have the system here um, but what we have is a big trough moving into the Pacific Northwest of the United States. And when you have this trough moving eastward, uh, which is uh, moving pretty slowly, uh, this ridge over Texas uh, balloons northeastward ahead of the trough and when you get this ridge ballooning northeastward it's blocking any path to the north in here so anything that comes into the Bay of Campeche passes to the south of this ridge and gets steered right into Mexico and dies and uh, that's what happens a lot with some Caribbean systems in years where the Texas ridge is strong and uh, here we do have a strong ridge and that will prevent any northward movement so this is not really a big threat uh, just a big rainmaker and another system reminding us that the hurricane season is in full swing and again, here's day three, uh, the system in the southern Bay of Campeche. The only other thing we're going to uh, perhaps have to watch is that we have a frontal boundary moving off of the southeast United States uh, during this time. This would be on Thursday, Wednesday night and Thursday. And into the weekend, we may have to watch this because it will be sitting down here and festering. And sometimes you can get a homegrown type development where circulation develops along the frontal boundary because it is trapped beneath ridging to the north and it just kind of sits here over warm water. And if it does that, we may have to watch it, but pressures are going to be pretty high in here and uh, chances favor nothing happening at all. There's also a little bit of funny business here. This is a wave that is moving uh, northwestward and if it happens to interact with the tail of this front sometime in five to seven days, 
you know, something could happen, but chances are really low for that. Uh, we'll be monitoring the area, of course, uh, but chances greatly favor nothing really happening until we get to July, which is when things may start picking up again. This is the GFS Ensemble mean forecast for the MJO, and you can see right now it's in phases four and five, and this corresponds to the Maritime Continent, which is on the other side of the world. It's moving into the Western Pacific, but see where it goes. In two weeks, see, see where it is. It's in phases eight and one, and this uh, corresponds to the Western Hemisphere. Phase eight is uh, the Eastern Pacific phase one starts getting into the Caribbean and uh, when you start getting the MJO in here wherever the MJO is air tends to rise and when you get that you can get more thunderstorms than normal and you can start uh, favoring tropical development and uh, this is what the GFS shows now it goes way out here the amplitude is too high the GFS tends to overhype the MJO but what's more significant is that the European model which is the best we have for the MJO agrees with the idea of this punching out into phase 8 and then moving around into phase one and phase two which is this one and phases one two and even sometimes three can really favor development in the Atlantic if you get it out into eight here what's probably going to happen is we're going to get a storm in the eastern Pacific but then once it starts traveling this way into phases one and two uh, there's the, a chance that we will get something to develop in the Atlantic as a result of that. Can't guarantee that, but the setup for it uh, will be most favorable when the MJO moves into this area, and this will be happening during the first 10, 10 days of July. And uh, the MJO has been very well behaved this year. It's been moving around and around this middle region, and uh, when it does this in a very predictable manner, it's very easy to predict uh, when the uh, when the Atlantic will be active tropically and we were able to do that fairly well with Andrea and we're able to do it here um, as much as a week ago before Andrea was even gone we were able to talk about the first week of July being a target period uh, for potential development of our second system and uh, we can see that indeed we are going to see that so the first 10 days of July uh, will be our best shot at getting another system and here's the European ensemble mean forecast of sea level pressures for day 10 and you can see what it's doing out here these purple colors mean that the ensemble members are showing the potential for development of a tropical storm in the eastern Pacific this is when the MJO is punching out into phase 8 uh, so we may get a storm in the eastern Pacific there and then as it comes around the MJO will start moving eastward and will start focusing a lot of upward motion in here and uh, we may see another storm perhaps in the Atlantic cannot be guaranteed until we actually have a disturbance to track if we ever have one the MJO does not guarantee development but it sets us up in a favorable environment uh, to get one so if a disturbance moves into the area during that time period it may have to be watched so we will keep an eye on that and again here's 93 L moving into Central America not a big threat big rainmaker could perhaps have a chance of becoming a tropical depression either east of Belize or in the southern Bay of Campeche uh, but rain will be the story with this system so keep an eye on that and we shall see what happens